Space asks to collect data for giving employment to migrant workers after mapping their skills, directs to consider withdrawal of complaints against migrant workers for alleged violation of lockdown norms. Union Home Minister Amit Shah addresses West Bengal Jan Sambad rally through video conference, slams Mamta Banerjee government over political violence, hits out at Mamta government for not allowing the implementation of Ayushman Bharat scheme, questions whether poor people of Bengal have any right to receive free and quality education, medical aid. Today is the last date to file nominations for the Rajya Sabha elections, elections to fill 24 vacant seats to be held on June 19. Highest ever government allocation of 1,1500 crore rupees under Manrega during the financial year 2020-21. Work offered to 6.69 crore persons so far in this financial year. The focus is on works for water conservation, irrigation, plantation, horticulture and individual beneficiary for livelihood promotion. 1,29,214 COVID-19 patients cured and discharged in the country, 7,466 fatalities. The total number of active cases is now 1,29,917. The WHO chief warns that the coronavirus pandemic is worsening globally, urges countries to press on with efforts to contain the virus. Over 71 lakh thousand people worldwide, over 71 lakh people worldwide have been affected by the coronavirus. Deaths have surpassed 4 lakhs. Namaskar and welcome to the news. I'm Mark Lynn. Let's begin with our top story. Now the Supreme Court has pronounced its verdict on a plea of migrants workers, the migrant workers plea, and uh, the Supreme Court has ordered the center to identify all migrant workers through registration. The Apex Court directed the center and the states to transport migrant workers back to their hometowns within 15 days. The Supreme Court directed the center to provide additional trains for transportation of migrant workers within 24 hours of states making the demand. While the Apex Court has also asked the states and union territories to formulate a scheme for providing employment to migrant workers and directed them to collect data for giving employment to migrant workers after mapping their skills to rehabilitate them. The Supreme Court has also directed authorities to consider withdrawing all cases against migrant workers for alleged violation of lockdown norms under the Disaster Management Act. Moving on to our next story, the Union Home Minister and Senior BJP Leader Amit Shah today addressed the West Bengal Jan Sambad rally through a video conference. And addressing that rally, his third event in the past three days, Amit Shah said that the BJP will never forget the sacrifices of workers and promised to return the pristine glory of the state. बंगाल के अंदर परिवर्तन के लिए राजनीतिक संघर्ष करते करते 100 से ज्यादा भारतीय जनता पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं ने अपनी जान गवाई है मैं बहुत संवेदना के साथ आज उस सौ कार्यकर्ताओं के परिवारों को सलाम करना चाहता हूं कि आपके परिवार का त्याग आपके परिवार का बलिदान सोनार बांग्ला के निर्माण में एक महत्वपूर्ण पड़ाव है इसका बहुत योगदान है और जब भी बंगाल के अंदर परिवर्तन का इतिहास लिखा जाएगा आपके परिजनों ने जो बलिदान दिया है उसको स्वर्णिम अक्षर से लिखा जाएगा the Home Minister also raised the question on the development work in West Bengal in the past uh, 10 years हमारा आप हिसाब मांगती हो मैं तो हिसाब लेकर आया हूं आप कल जरा एक प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस कर कर आपके 10 साल का हिसाब दीजिएगा और ध्यान से दीजिएगा कहीं बम धमाकों की संख्या मत बता दीजिएगा बंद फैक्ट्रियों की संख्या मत बता दीजिएगा भाजपा के मार दिए कार्यकर्ताओं की संख्या मत बता दीजिएगा हिसाब लाना है तो विकास का लेकर आइए ममता दी मैं आपको कहता हूं कल आप हिसाब लेकर आइए Dwelling on the measures taken by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government for the welfare of the poor, the minister slammed the chief minister 
Mamta Banerjee for not allowing the implementation of Ayushman Bharat scheme. मोदी जी लोकप्रिय न हो जाए इसके डर से ममता दीदी आयुष्मान भारत योजना को बंगाल की धरती पर उतारना नहीं चाहती मैं पूछना चाहता हूं ममता दीदी से क्या बंगाल के गरीब का अधिकार नहीं है क्या बंगाल के गरीब को अपने बूढ़े बाप का छोटे बच्चे की इलाज कराने का अधिकार नहीं है आयुष्मान भारत योजना से बंगाली क्यों विमुख आपकी राजनीति करने के लिए बहुत सारे मैदान है ममता जी कोई मैदान आप तय कर दो कर लेंगे दो दो हाथ गरीबों के अधिकार को आप क्यों रोक कर बैठे और मैं आज बंगाल की जनता को कहना चाहता हूं कि सरकार बंगाल के गरीबों के अधिकार को रोक कर बैठे हम किसानों को पैसा भेजना चाहते हैं किसानों की सूची नहीं मिलती हम गरीबों को आयुष्मान भारत योजना के माध्यम से पांच लाख तक स्वार्थ का खर्चा देना चाहते हैं आयुष्मान भारत योजना बंगाल के अंदर लागू नहीं हो किस प्रकार की व्यवस्था आप कर राजनीति की भी एक हद होती और आप हमें कह रही है हम राजनीति कर रहे हैं देश भर ने देश भर ने आयुष्मान भारत योजना स्वीकार ली अंत में अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने भी स्वीकार ली मगर ममता दीदी आप क्यों नहीं स्वीकार रही हो बंगाल की जनता आपको पूछना चाहती है और मैं भी पूछना चाहता हूं Today is the last date for filing of nominations for the elections to 24 seats of the Rajya Sabha. The elections will be held on the 19th of June for 24 seats of the Rajya Sabha, including 18 where polling was deferred earlier due to the lockdown and six seats falling vacant in June and July. The Election Commission decided to go ahead with the elections to four Rajya Sabha seats, each from Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat and Karnataka, three from Rajasthan, three from Madhya Pradesh, two from Charkhand and one seat each from Manipur, Meghalaya, Arunachar Pradesh and Mizoram. On Friday, the voting time has been fixed between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. The results will be announced on the same day. The poll panel has asked the chief secretaries concerned to depute a senior officer for the state, uh, from the state to ensure that instructions regarding COVID-19 containment measures are complied with while making arrangements for the elections. This would involve observing of social distancing during the voting process. The Vande Bharat mission, one of the biggest evacuation drives in the world, continues to bring back Indians from all over the world. In this series, a special repatriation Musket Vijayawada flight uh, will take off from Musket and will bring home stranded Indians from there. The check-in for the special flight is underway and this is the first flight under phase two of the Vande Bharat mission from Oman. In Kerala, malls, restaurants and some places of worship have opened today after 76 days of closure following the COVID-19 induced nationwide lockdown. All places which are open to the public were disinfected on Monday. The Kerala government has prescribed protocols to be followed at these places. With temples reopening today, several precautionary measures are being taken, including steps to ensure social distancing. At the famous Guruvayur temple, devotees will be regulated through online registration. Major mosques in the state, however, have decided not to reopen till further notice, as it was felt that the situation was not conducive as now. And while some Christian denominations are planning to reopen churches from today by strictly adhering to the pandemic prevention protocol, most have decided to defer the opening till the end of this month. The Indian Railways registered the best ever safety record during April 2019, March 2020. Uh, since April last year till now, there, have been, uh, no, there has been no fatality on uh, any railway passenger or any train accident. And uh, the remarkable feat has been achieved for the first time in the year 2019-20 since the introduction of the railway system in India 166 years ago in the year 1853. Zero passenger fatalities in the last 15 months is a result of continuous efforts by the Indian Railways to improve safety performance in all respects. Safety being the topmost priority always, the measures uh, undertaken for the improvement of safety include elimination of manned level crossings, uh, the construction of road over bridges, road under bridges, rehabilitation of bridges, the highest ever renewal of rail tracks, highest ever supply of rails during this year from SAIL sale, 
The State Authority of India Limited, effective track maintenance, stringent monitoring of safety aspects, improved training of railway staff, improving in signaling system, use of modern technology for safety works, switching over to modern and safer LHB coaches uh, in phases from the conventional ICF coaches and the like. Moving on, Pakistani troops again violated the ceasefire and they resorted to unprovoked and indiscriminate firing on Indian forward posts and civilian areas in border district of Poonch today in the morning. The defense spokesperson told DD News that uh, Pakistani troops started firing along the LOC in a Mancourt sector of Poonch district and the Indian Army retaliated befittingly. Last evening as well, Pakistani Army had violated the ceasefire and targeted civilian areas in Khari and Karmara area of Poonch district. The Indian Air Force has designed, developed and manufactured an airborne rescue pod for isolated transportation or ARPITH. Now this board will be utilized for the evacuation of critical patients with infectious diseases, including COVID-19, from high altitude areas, isolated and remote areas as well. The requirement of an air evacuation system with a facility to prevent uh, the spreading of infectious aerosol from a COVID-19 patient during air travel was felt by the Indian Air Force when COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic. Supporting the Atman Nirbhar Bharat call by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, only indigenous materials have been used to fabricate this pod and this indigenously designed system has been developed at a cost of 60,000 rupees only, which is very uh, low compared to the imported systems, which cost uh, nearly 60 lakh rupees. The Enforcement Directorate can attach properties of the fugitive economic offender, Nirav Modi, after a special judge permitted the agency to confiscate these properties, barring those mortgaged or hypothecated to parties like the Punjab National Bank within a month. Nirav Modi was declared a FEO on uh, December 5 last year that enabled the ED to move for confiscation of his properties in India, the United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates. This is for the first time an agency will be able to confiscate the property of an economic offender since the FEO Act. As well, that was an FEO Act of 2018 and it had come into force then. So the ED has listed properties valued to be worth uh, 1,396.07 crore rupees, which it claimed was purchased or owned using proceeds of crime for confiscation. The application also seeks to sell paintings seized by the Income Tax Department. Moving on, in Europe, uh, countries with over 20,000 deaths reported were Italy, France and Spain. We're talking about COVID now. However, Italy reported 65 new coronavirus cases, while the daily tally of new cases has risen to 280 from 197 on Sunday. In France, In France, coronavirus deaths were uh, four times higher on Monday than the day earlier, but uh, the increase of new confirmed cases for COVID-19 were at a one-week low, while Paris's zoo reopened from Monday after a three-month closure because of COVID-19 shutdown with 62 new residents. 62 babies were born in the zoo on the city's uh, eastern edge, including new baboons or oryxes, uh, penguins and flamingos. Now, one of the newest arrivals were twin ring-tailed lemurs, born on May 2. Meanwhile, in Spain, gyms opened their doors to the public on Monday as uh, restrictions in the Spanish capital eased after three months of lockdown. Gyms are allowed to reopen at limited capacity under phase two of the government's de-escalation plan. The sports center has had to adapt its space to new uh, normalities like uh, positioning plastic screens between treadmills to maintain distance and thoroughly disinfecting all its equipment. Spain has reported over 27,000 deaths due to COVID-19 with uh, over 2,40,000 confirmed cases. Denmark plans to lift the limit on public gatherings from 50 to 100 people in July and to 200 in August as it eases measures to curb the spread of the coronavirus. 
Belgium has allowed almost all businesses to reopen on Monday, including bars and restaurants, but social distancing measures remained the same. Restrictions were eased almost after 12 weeks of the lockdown. Customers were given QR code for menu and waiters are being asked to wear face shields. In Bangladesh, the government has uh, instructed mosques and other places of worship to disseminate messages about coronavirus prevention to spread awareness about the infection. The religious bodies have asked uh, those places to announce 12 instructions through loudspeakers from their respective uh, places. Meanwhile, the coronavirus spread continued to rise with 42 new deaths reported in the past 24 hours in Bangladesh. And the death toll in Bangladesh has reached 930, with the total number of people infected rising to 68,504. The country has tested 4,10,841 people till now. And continuing with the strategy of zone-wise shutdowns, the government has put East Raja Bazar uh, area under experimental lockdown from Tuesday. In South Africa, children headed back to their classrooms. Desks were disinfected and temperature uh, was checked of the students back at school, the school gates before they entered their classes. The country has begun gradually loosening one of the strictest lockdowns in the world. Last week, officials urged teaching staff to defy a government order to return to work. But the country has reported uh, an improvement in the situation. Mexico has reported 3,484 new cases and 188 additional deaths on Monday. In the second week of phased normal return to businesses, people were confused as the government announced a maximum risk of transmission for next week. The Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, reopened businesses two weeks ago in view of the revival of the economy. However, Officials have urged citizens to see a doctor early if presented with coronavirus symptoms as the country struggles to flatten the infection curve. Months after going into lockdown, Mexico's uh, total confirmed cases have mounted to over 1,17,000. A meeting of the group of ministers discussed uh, issues regarding COVID-19. The meeting, which was headed by the Union Health Minister, Dr. Harshvardhan, was held through video conferencing. External Affairs Minister, uh, Urban Development Minister, MOS Home and MOS Chemicals and Fertilizers were present at this meeting. Senior officials participated via video conferencing as well. The Tamil Nadu government has decided to cancel the state 10th standard board exams uh, scheduled to begin from June 15th in view of the current coronavirus crisis. The state has uh, the second highest number of COVID-19 cases in the country. The Tamil Nadu government has also canceled the pending class 11 examinations. Also, a decision on Tamil Nadu class 12 exams for absent students will be taken later. Chief Minister Irapadi Malinisamy has announced that students would be promoted on the basis of 80% weightage for half yearly or quarterly exam marks and 20% weightage for attendance. Earlier, the Madras High Court had asked the Tamil Nadu government to consider postponement of the exams in view of soaring COVID-19 cases across the state, where the tally as of Monday stood at 33,299 Hearing a petition by the Teachers Association challenging the government's decision to conduct the exams amid the pandemic, a division bench of Justices Vineet Kotari and R. Suresh Kumar made it clear it would not allow the state to put lives of more than 9 lakh students at stake. The Telangana government's decision to cancel the 10 standard exams yesterday also triggered the, the demand for the cancellation of Tamil Nadu's class 10 exams.
The HRD Minister, Dr. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank, appealed to all teachers, academicians, educationists to share their points of view on this matter using hashtag syllabus for students 2020. He asked them to share their ideas on Twitter and Facebook page. In another tweet, he said that the HRD ministry is contemplating the option of reduction in syllabus and instruction hours for the coming years. The decision was taken after receiving requests from parents and teachers. The Madhya Pradesh uh, government has urged uh, top state and uh, has emerged as the top state in the country uh, for wheat production. This is on the support of uh, purchasing more than one crore metric tons from farmers. A total of over 1.27 lakh metric tons of wheat was procured by the Madhya Pradesh government, which uh, amounts, which accounts for 33 percent of all wheat procured in the country. Punjab stands at the second position in wheat procurement in the country. Over 3.8 lakh metric tons of wheat was procured in the country this year. Wheat procurement in Madhya Pradesh increased by 74% compared to last year. Last year, a total of 73.69 lakh tons of wheat was procured in the state on support price. The state government had targeted procuring 100 lakh metric tons. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has released a video on appropriate behavior during COVID-19 times. Let's watch it. And that's all we have in this bulletin. Thanks for being with us. Namaskar.